All right, today I'm gonna to go through how to pick an acid decimal. So I'm gonna start going through what the internals of the locker like, the theory behind picking it, and then we'll try and do a blind pick together. So first of all, the pins in the acid decimal, all designed with a foot, which gets caught by the key and fed to the right height, and a set of three gates with a true gate for the slider to fit in, and then two false gates, which are designed to be very similar to the true gate. If, if they aren't binding up tight against the sidebar, it's actually very difficult to distinguish them from the, the true gate. And finally, they always have one filled in section, which stops you from starting off in a false set. Even if you're picking upside down with lock installed upside down, Half the pins have a filled-in section at the bottom instead of at the top, so whether you're picking right way up or upside down, you'll never start in a false set. So the actual strategy for picking through the Acidesmo is pretty much the same as for any slider lock. First step is get into a deep enough false set for the, the slider to bind up against the false gates. You do a jiggle test to see which, which gates are false. I tend to either mentally or on paper note down which of the fault which sliders are currently in false gates, and then go back to step one, move them up a gate, and then just continue cycling until the lock opens. And when you start to actually pick this lock, the first thing that's gonna happen is if you're picking clockwise, the first thing that'll happen is the sidebar on the right is going to bind up against any lock, any of the pins with a filled in section at the top. So the first step is to very carefully move each of these pins into the first gate, while at the same time being careful not to lift any of these pins that start off in a false gate, meaning you only want to move the pins that are actively binding at the start. Then once you've done that for the, the first four pins, the core is going to be able to rotate very slightly. Now you might be good at this point, you might be deep enough to do a, a jiggle test, but depending on how the, the pins are configured, you might, the sidebar might be just hovering above the, uh, the false gates. And if that's the case, it's pretty simple. You just need to pick the, the left side, make sure everything on the left side is also in a gate, and then you should be good to go. Now, the reason I think that this will only happen sometimes, um, is because it depends how many of these zero lift gates are on the left hand side because if it's mostly zero lifts the sidebar will be able on the left will be able to rotate a little bit even if you haven't picked it yet so depending on that you might be able to just pick the right side in isolation or you might have to pick them both sort of at the same time um, either way once everything's in a gate or what will be happening is the, the right sidebar will be pushing hard against the, the core of the false gates. So from that point, you just want to try lifting each of the pins a little bit. And if the pin can lift up and fall down, then it's it might be in a true gate or it might just be in a, a deeper false gate. But if it feels stuck, like it's biting hard against this thing, I'll tend to note down which pin is in a false gate in a little table like this, then rotate the core back far enough for me to be able to lift through the false gates and then just repeat until this side is fully set and then you'll be able to do the same false gate binding on the other side. Um, as for actually how to manipulate the sliders, so you can make a little custom slider pick and slide it slide it up and down like that. But the problem with doing it that way, at least the problem I've had, is when you try and manipulate the second slider, so if I push here, it just slides right over. So it's actually quite difficult to pick you know, this way, but just a standard short hook, if you run it along the bottom of the keyway, 
it gets stuck here. And then from there you can just get it here, push up, slide along, push up. And then if you're picking it right way up, the way to pick down is just to let... Actually, you can do the same thing and reverse pick it this way, but when you're doing a jiggle test, all you have to do is use gravity. So if you lift it up, gravity will do half the work for you. Right. Right, so obviously I've picked this lock quite a few times, so to make it a realistic uh, walkthrough. I'm just going to put the, the pins in at random. There we go. We have a lock that I yep. <laughs> we have a lock that I don't know the bidding to. Just an interesting little point about the sidebar. Sidebars always have a little pin with a spring in that keep them out. Yep, I apparently can't coordinate myself today. Yep, so they have this little pin that pushes them out. But when the sidebar sticks in, that pin actually goes all the way into the lock, serving as a bit of a passive pin. Um, which is why the, the keys have this little notch in the middle. There we go, one acid decimal. Let's see if we can decode and pick this together. I'll have to redo this one day with a proper you know, mini camera so you can see what's happening to each of the pins individually. That's the best I can do for now. Alright, here we go. Okay, this is how I keep track, so I know each pin must be in at least, the true gate must be in at least position one, and then as I learn which gates are false, I'll start adding to that telly. And so first of all, you can see, I think you can see, see how it's just going up and down, so if it's like that, don't pick it, it might already be in a gate. Just find the ones that are binding, give them a little nudge. Okay, I think, I think we're in a false set now, so we should be good. So you see how they jiggle up and down? It means we're not in a deep enough false set for the false gates to bind. Uh, actually, looks like pin 3 is a bit stuck. So I might actually just get pin 3 to position 2 immediately. I'm struggling to do a bit. Let's just there we go. Actually, pin 3 still feels like it's binding, but I might pick the left-hand side anyway so I can get into a deeper false set, and it's, it's easy to tell at that point. So one thing about picking these sliders, you can often pick a little bit too far and then get stuck on the next gate. 
So it helps not to lose too much tension. So they don't get caught as much. There we go. Again, just use the grooves on the side to navigate. We're gonna do before set. So now we can do a jiggle test. Okay, one is still jiggling a little bit. Two, two feels very stuck. Three also feels very stuck. And so does four. Every single one, pretty much. And also know that pins one into a low cut, isn't like we've got the low offset, which I might as well note down. Um, okay, let's move everything up a gate, except for one, obviously. So we've got to let the core rotate back a little bit. Okay, there we go. I think I've moved everything up one position. And pin two actually feels stuck already, so I might just get him up to... Might have lifted him too high, but that's fine. If you lift too high, you can always just... Oh, no mind, that's good. I think. Okay, you heard that deeper set okay not 100% about one and four but it feels like it's good so let me just try doing a jiggle test on the left hand side Number three seems like it's holding us back, so let's get him out. Okay, let me just note down what I know about the... So this was... I think that's correct, actually. I think I could put this one in three as well, so let me just note down. Yeah, I would normally pay more attention, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. Actually, pin two is also. Pins two and three feel stuck. So my, I don't know, pin four has got a little bit of wiggle. But two and two and three definitely. Which is good news because the fact that they're binding hard means that we're probably good uh, with this one. Let's see if I can get a nice little camera shot of what it's. There we go, so that appears to be the bidding for the right-hand side. So if you wanted, you could take a photo of that to 3D print the key, or just keep better track than I am of what the bidding is, and then you could 3D print yourself a key or something.
So again, you want to be careful to avoid sk uh, skipping gates if you can. But on the bright side, you can rotate rotate back far enough for these pins to drop down while still leaving these ones intact. So in theory, you never have to worry about them again once they're good. Okay, I think I got two and three out of their gates properly, although three st three still feels stuck. Two is definitely a lot more jiggly though. Um, number four. Okay, three feels stuck, so let's get him into the next gate up. Okay, I've lost everything. Um, okay, I think we got back to the point where we were. Okay, now one feels jammed. Um, okay, everything else was good but one, so if we can just carefully... Hey, there we go. Yeah, so that's the, the strategy. The better you can remember where you are in the lock, the less bad it is when you make mistakes and have to start again. Um, is where I completely lost the right hand side, but if you remember or if you write it down, you can get right back and not lose your progress. Um, yeah, and again, normally I, I would be keeping track and I'd be able to tell you what the left hand side is, but again, I, that wasn't because once you get one side done, it's actually there's not much left, so you actually don't need to worry about noting the left hand side too much. So you can see the bidding of our our look. There we go, that's how to pick an Acidesmo. I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, let me know if anyone, if you need a hand, I'm always happy to help if you have any questions or anything. All right, thanks for watching and have an awesome day. Don't lose pins like I just did.